In this lecture, we begin our discussion with the module memory system. The first unit of this module deals with the basics of memory and cache. After learning this unit, you should be able to illustrate the principal characteristics of a memory system. You should be able to analyze the module, a memory module to indicate the size of the address bus, the data bus and also the memory organization basically. You should be able to describe the hierarchical organization of memory composed of registers, cache, main memory, magnetic disks, magnetic tapes, etcetera. You should be able to indicate the basic concepts and the intent of behind the usage of cache memory. You should be able to discuss the key elements of any cache design and you should be able to describe the basic design of a direct mapped cache and its basic access mechanism. Memory basics. So, what is memory? Memory is that unit in the computer which holds program instructions and data. To execute a program, the CPU fetches the program instructions from memory. It also loads the data corresponding to the operates, operands of these instructions from the memory. After the execution of the instructions, it stores the data produced uh, after executing that instruction in also into the memory. Memory is broadly classified into two categories, inboard memory and outboard memory. Also, we also have offline stor storage, which are basically bulk storage devices. So, what is inboard memory? Inboard memory is are those memory units which are directly plugged into the motherboard of the computer. So, we have processor registers, cache memory, main memory, th those are within on the motherboard of the computer itself, either on the processor or on the motherboard. Outboard memory on the other hand like magnetic disks or hard disks, optical disks etcetera are outboard memory are not on the motherboard are not plugged on the motherboard on the of the computer. Offline storage as I said are bulk storage devices like magnetic tapes. Now, we will go on through a few basic definitions and terminologies which characterize memory. The first of them is capacity of a memory module. The capacity of a memory module is characterized in terms of the number of distinctly addressable memory locations and also the size of each of those locations. So, typically if, um, the typically the size of a memory location is is one byte for byte addressable memory. Although there could be something called word addressable memory where I I, um, I can address in, in, in higher um, uh, more than a word, more than a byte meaning that suppose if a word consists of 4 bytes it and if it is word addressable I would not be able to address and find out each byte within a word, but I will be able to access the byte uh, the words themselves. Unit of transfer the number of data bits read out or written into the memory at a given time is called the unit of transfer. Unit of transfer is basically determined by the size of the data bus in the computer. For a 32 bit computer, 4 bytes is the unit of transfer. A word is defined as the natural unit of organization of memory. So, this is the unit with which the processor basically executes its uh, you know, works. This is the unit with which the processor basically works. This is the this is the typical number of bits used to represent integers within the processor and also the average instruction length. We will assume in this course that word size is equal to the unit of transfer. However, in general word size can be different from the unit of transfer, but as I said in this course for us word size equals to unit of transfer. Some computer systems are word addressable as I said at the beginning they are not byte addressable and therefore, the basic addressable unit in these computers is one word. So, if one word is 4 bytes the basic addressable units are in multiples of 4 bytes. Memory addressing 
consider a 32 bit memory. So, word size uh, is 32 bits in my computer, unit of transfer equals to word size equals to 32 bits and this computer is byte addressable. So, I can uniquely identify each byte in the memory. The figure shows a possible way of addressing memory locations. Address of a word is always an integer multiple of 4. So, therefore, in this the byte addresses for word 0, the byte addresses for word 0 are 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. For the uh, for word number 1, the byte addresses are 4, 5, 6, 7. For word number 2, the byte addresses are 8, 9, 10, 11 and so on. Okay. So, if we have a 32 bit uh, address bus, if we have a 32 bit address bus, the, high, the higher order 30 bits of an address will specify a distinct word. Why? Because we have 4 bytes per word, so 2 bits are necessary to identify a byte within a word and the higher order 30 bits will identify a given word within the memory. The two least significant bits specify a particular byte within a word. Memory data access methods. So, we have different types of memories and in these different types of memories there are various access methods. For example, we have sequential access memories in which data are stored as units called records and uh, data are referenced in terms of its current location. So, there is a read write head which is which is on which is typically on the last location from which data was read or written to. So, we start from this current location and read in a sequential manner we pass over and reject intermediate records until we re reach the desired location. So, access time depends on the current location and is highly variable. An example of this type of memory is magnetic tapes. Second, we also have direct access type of memories. Hard disks that is magnetic disks are direct access types of memories. Each individual block has an unique address. Access is by jumping to the vicinity of the block and then by doing a sequential search. Access time again depends on the current location and is highly variable. The third access type is random access type of memory. In random access memories, each addressable location has a unique wired in addressing mechanism and the access time is constant independent of the location or prior access pattern. Therefore, it is different from sequential access and direct access type of memories in which the access time was dependent on the current position of the read write head. So, here the time to access a given byte is independent of which byte I am addressing and which location I have currently accessed. The fourth type of uh, memory is uh, associative memories. Associative memories are basically random access type of memories in which there is an additional facility we can compare for a specific match of desired bit locations within the word and the memory allows to do this match of desired bit locations within the within a word for all words in this memory data is located data is located or identified based on a portion of the contents rather than the address that is along with the address of the memory location, I also use a part of the contents of a word to find out whether the, the, the desired word is present in the memory. As because this is random access, access time is constant and is independent of the location or prior access pattern. An example of this type of memory is cache memory. The memory is uh, characterized also based on different performance parameters. The first important performance parameter is access time or access latency. For random access memory, access time 
is defined as the difference of time between the presentation of an address on the memory address register from which it goes to the address bus and the storing of data on the memory data register from the data bus. For non random access memory, this access time or access latency is the time required to position the read write head at the desired bit location and to read the first bit up to the time the first bit is read. So, this is the access latency for non random access memories. Memory cycle time is typically applied to random access type of memory and is defined as the access time plus delay for memory to recover before a second access is made. This delay may be required for transient signals on the buses to die down before the next access can be made. The third performance parameter is transfer rate, the rate at which data can be moved into and out of memory. For random access memories, this is defined as 1 by memory cycle time. For non random access memories, let T n denote the average time to read or write n bits. Then uh, and T a is the average access time, n is the number of bits and r is the transfer rate in bits per second. Then access time or sorry the transfer rate is defined as T n equals to T a plus n by r. So, here uh, for example, in sequential access memory as we know that the the time to access a given memory word is dependent on the current position of the read write head and is therefore, variable. So, over a given set of accesses we first find out what is the average time required to access any record within the memory that is T a or the average access time. Now, to transfer n bits of, of uh, from the memory we first need to access the first bit and then one by one transfer the next n bits. So, we have T a plus n by r where r is the transfer rate in bits per second. Physical issues of memory. So, what are the physical types of memories that are available? We have semiconductor memories that is RAMs and ROMs. We have magnetic surface memories, magnetic disks and magnetic tapes. We have optical memories CDs and DVDs we also have magneto optical type of disks. Physical characteristics memory can be volatile in which memory information decays and is lost when power is switched off. For example, in case of semiconductor memories such as SRAMs and in DRAMs they are volatile, the information is lost when power is switched off. We also have non volatile memories in which recorded information remains intact until deliberately changed. So, in these in these non volatile memories no electrical power is needed to retain information, magnetic optical and some semiconductor memories are non volatile memories. Non erasable memory stored information cannot be altered for example, ROMs or read only memories. Obviously, non erasable memories are also non volatile. Now, we talk of different memory tech when we talk of different memory technologies two important characteristics become very important. What is its access time and what is its cost per GB? For example, in SRAM type, SRAM type of memories the access time is about 0 0.5 to 2.5 nanoseconds. However, the cost per GB is about 2000 to 5000 dollars. So, we can understand that for SRAM they are very fast for typical processors today it will be about or at least one tenth it will run at at least one tenth the speed of the processor. However, the cost as we see is also very high for DRAMs the uh, the access time is of the order of 50 to 70 nanoseconds. That means, it is uh, about 50 to 70 times uh, it is it is about um, 50 to 100 times um, slower than the SRAM memory units. 
However, the cost per GB is also about 80 to 90 times lower. So, the cost per GB for DRAMs is about 20 dollars to 75 dollars per GB. In for magnetic disks or hard disks, the access time is thousands of times slower than the processor. So, it is about 5 to 20 milliseconds that means, it is tens of thousands of times slower than the processor speed. DRAMs are hundreds of times slower than the processor speed. Magnetic disks are tens of thousands of times slower than the processor speed. However, the cost per GB is also very, very low. With this discussion, we complete part 1 of unit 1.